Good morning. So, like Brandon said, my name is Kirsten Martinez. I am the next gen admin here at The Rock, and I also assist my husband, Alex, um, who did announcements this morning, um, lead in high school. Um, so, I'm just going to go right into my story. So, I grew up in a Christian home with three sisters, no brothers. Any only girl families out there? I'm praying for you. God bless you. <laughs> Growing up with all sisters definitely came with its unique challenges. Um, I remember growing up, my dad, whenever he would introduce us to colleagues or just anyone in general, he would always say something significant about each of us as he would, you know, go down the line introducing us. And I remember that just initially creating this deep desire in my heart to be noticed and seen. In 2009, I met Jesus in a real way for the first time. I knew him, but I didn't know him. In that moment, I knew him, and I knew him for myself, and he radically encountered me. It was definitely one of those first love moments. Is anyone out there competitive? Yeah, okay. So as an adult, I've learned that there are certain games I just can't play because I get just way too competitive and I don't have the self-control. One of those is spoons. <laughs> can anyone else relate? <laughs> Uh, yeah, my husband can attest to that. So in, in middle school, I joined a uh, varsity volleyball team. So I was the youngest on the team. I would show up to every practice, work really hard, because I had to keep up to the rest of the girls. Um, and then I would show up to every game in the uniform, all ready to go, knowing that for two years, I would sit on the bench every week, because I wasn't old enough to play. Um, and then in eighth grade, I started uh, attending ballet classes at a dance studio. And because I started at 13, normally when you do ballet, if you wanna be good at it, you start at like four or five or even younger. So for me, starting at 13, in order to catch up to my peers, I had to work really, really hard. In my mind, growing up, again, with all sisters in a competitive household, uh, the enemy really took a hold of my mind um, and led me to believe that I had to become the best in order to be seen because people who are the best, are, those are the ones who are pointed out. And because I never knew I was seen by my heavenly father, I got lost in who people thought I was or thought I should be. So by freshman year, I was trying to be the best at volleyball, which meant jumping the highest, hitting the hardest, having the most accurate serves and trying to be the best at ballet, which meant being flexible, strong, and um, maintaining a specific body type. And so trying to be the best at both volleyball and ballet led me, um, eventually led me into developing an eating disorder. The enemy had deceived me into thinking that I wasn't enough and that I had to do more. I had to be more. And it all started with a simple lie that I wasn't seen. And all this is happening while I'm still highly involved in church. I'm attending every youth um, event ever, ever, um, which meant every, every week at youth, every Sunday service I would say with my friends or Saturday night service, depending on the week. And then um, I would attend every youth camp, everything. I would serve in children's ministry. And it was all because I thought my worth, my significance came from what I could do and what I could give. And with that, so I, I would only end up eating when I was around people because then it wouldn't be noticed. Then it would be hidden sin and, and no one else would see it. But when I was by myself, that simple lie of you're not seen, you have to be the best, do this, do that, began to grow and eventually it took over. So by senior year, um, this, this simple lie or at least it started out as simple, completely took over my life. Um, I was only able to do and, and eat whatever this lie told me I could, um, which really is just a demonic spirit and a stronghold in my life. So one night, coming home, or on my way home from a worship night or something along those lines, my brother-in-law, Aaron Dolce, 
um, he, he was taking me home, and while we were in the car, I, was, I just broke down, and I was crying, and I was telling him everything that I had been experiencing, everything that had gone on. And now, mind you, this isn't the first time I did that. This is like the second or third. But the difference is, is that this time, I was desperate. I remember the words coming out of my mouth, um, either this thing is going to kill me, or Jesus has to save me. And I, I mean, just in general, I'm a disciplined person. So I have discipline. Does anyone know what the strength finders test is? Okay, discipline is one of my top five. So I'm a very disciplined person. So I, I, had, I knew how to have time with Jesus. I knew how to show up and serve. I knew how to be a good girl. Uh, but discipline is the lowest form of intimacy with the Lord. Discipline is the lowest form of intimacy with the Lord. It's it's the first love, fire, and passion that leads you into intimacy. It was my first encounter with the Lord, that first fire, that first passion that, lent to, that leads to intimacy. So I have discipline. I spent time with the Lord, but discipline alone did not sustain me. You have to have intimacy with God. That night, Aaron prayed over me with an authoritative prayer, commanding every lie and demonic spirit to be broken in the name of Jesus. And I left the car, went to bed, didn't feel any different. But the next morning, when I woke up, for the first time in four years, I was completely free. I had a completely clear head. There is power and intimacy in community and intimacy in the Lord. A few weeks ago, I, um, my husband and I were celebrating our third year anniversary of our first date ever. Um, and so we, we made a meal and we sat down and I just felt like the Lord was inviting us to take communion. And so he prayed and then I was praying and, and right when I began to pray, um, I just started weeping. And I'm not a crier, I just wanna point that out. I'm not a crier. I'm a thinker. <laughs> um, I just began to cry because the love of the Father was overwhelming me. And as, as I was praying, the Lord just kept saying, they need to know my love. They need to know my love. They need to know and go back to that first love encounter. That is the only thing that will sustain them. So this morning, I wanna tell you that God is not a master of an orphanage. He's a father. But if you think he is a master of an orphanage, that's what he's going to be, because that's all your conscience will allow you to see. I think some of us are still searching for the blessing of our father, not realizing that it has already been given to us by Jesus dying on the cross. Amen? So this morning, I'm gonna invite you guys to stand and I really feel like the Lord is inviting us into that first love encounter. If you've never had that before, he is inviting you into that first love encounter. The only thing that's sustainable. Or if it's been a long time since you've actually felt the love of the Father. The Lord is inviting us into, into a moment, into an encounter with him and his love. So everyone just close your eyes and hold your hands out like you're receiving a gift. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for who you are and what you've done. It is enough. It is enough. It is enough for everything that we are going through, every trial that we are currently facing. It is enough. Holy Spirit, right now I ask that you would release your presence and your love in the room. If you're someone who hasn't felt the love of a father in too long and your time with him has just been discipline, I wanna pray for you. Raise your hand.
If you're someone who's never felt the love of a father, you've never felt a healthy affection or expression of love from a father. The Lord is after your heart today. Jesus, we invite your love to invade us. Like that first love encounter. God, would you do that again right now? Would you do that again right now? Release your presence. Release your love. There's people in the room right now who have held up a wall because you're afraid of what it's gonna look like and you're afraid you're gonna look like a fool. And the Lord is asking you to release that wall. Your life is not your own. It was bought and paid for at a high price. Holy Spirit, release freedom in the room to all those who have been held captive. The keys are in front of you. All you have to do is say yes.